In Unit 3, we will address the structure of a paragraph. This unit is divided into six sections. Section 1. Characteristics of a paragraph Paragraphs, the units or building blocks of a text, play a central role for the quality of the written documentation of a research project. Especially in academic texts, as they are subject to academic principles such as clarity, paragraphs must not appear as a random collection of text blocks. In fact, they serve as important means to organize one's writing. Accordingly, good paragraphing shows the following characteristics. Entity. Each paragraph forms a logical unit presenting one main idea. If a new main argument comes up, it has to be discussed in a new paragraph. Organization. The sentences within the paragraph should be organized in a reasonable structure that helps unfolding the writer's arguments in a linear and logical way. Cohesion. Connective and transitional wording should support the logical flow within a paragraph. Transition. If possible, a transition to the next paragraph of a chapter should be provided. As pointed out, it is advisable that each paragraph is organized in a logical structure. Hence, the sentences within a paragraph are not ordered randomly, but according to their logical purpose. To achieve a logical order, it is useful to construct each paragraph as a unit consisting of three parts – beginning, middle and end. Furthermore, each of the three parts should consist of a certain category of sentences. The three categories of sentences within the paragraph are Beginning – Topic Sentence Middle – Supporting Sentences and Concluding Sentence with few exceptions, a paragraph typically consists of at least three or more sentences. Please note, the three-part structure is a helpful means for logical argumentation in your text. However, there are categories of text units where this three-part structure does not necessarily apply. These text units refer to the research problem, the cause of investigation, the summary, the critical acclaim, the outlook. Additionally, if a paragraph consists of a simple list of facts, data, etc., again, the three-part structure is not applied. Section 2. Topic Sentence As its name implies, the topic sentence introduces the topic of the paragraph, that is, the main idea this paragraph is about. Accordingly, the topic sentence is stated very early in the paragraph, in most cases it is the first sentence. The topic sentence has to be formulated carefully. The way of formulating a topic sentence determines the following sentences of the paragraph. That means, for example, that the topic sentence should neither be too general nor too specific. If the topic sentence contains a statement that is too general, it will take too many supporting sentences to elaborate on the overly general point. In this case, the paragraph will be too long. On the other hand, if the topic statement is too specific, there might not be enough left to elaborate on. In this case, the topic sentence does not state a topic, but an already elaborated argument. An example for a topic sentence that might be too general. The EEG has a positive impact on energy projects. A topic sentence that might be too specific is, for example, The EEG is regarded as an instrument that removes the market risk in a renewable energy project by enabling a realization that otherwise would not be feasible due to uncertain market conditions, that is, insufficient sales volumes as well as insufficient sales prices. Let's provide an example for the beginning of a three-part paragraph. First, the introductive topic sentence could be as follows. 
the EEG is regarded as an instrument that removes the market risk in a renewable energy project. The second part of the paragraph will consist of the supporting sentences. Section 3. Supporting Sentences At least one or typically several supporting sentences follow the topic sentence. The supporting sentences contain the information discussing the main idea in detail. This information can consist of definitions, descriptions, examples, reasons, comparisons, etc. In the following, our example paragraph is continued by sentences that support and elaborate the topic sentence. Remember the topic sentence. The EEG is regarded as an instrument that removes the market risk in a renewable energy project. The supporting sentences might be as follows. Supporting sentence 1 could provide a description such as Renewable energy projects are energy producers that need to sell their power output to an off-taker. Supporting sentence 2 could provide an example. The German windmill farms, for example, sell the generated energy to the large utilities. Supporting sentence 3 could provide a further specification. Hence, renewable energy projects face a market risk, including the risk of insufficient sales volumes as well as insufficient sales prices. Supporting sentence 4 could state a reason. For this reason, the EEG provides a regulatory guarantee to renewable energy projects that the generated electricity can be entirely sold to the grid operator at a predetermined price. Please note that the elaboration on the main idea might follow a deductive flow, a progress from the general to the specific. A more general argument is introduced in the topic sentence, which, in the supporting middle part, is followed by descriptions and explanations leading from the general to the more specific. However, not every supporting part necessarily follows a deductive logic. It may as well support the topic by just stating examples, addressing a comparison, or listing a number of events, and so on. Section 4. Concluding Sentence The Weltstructure paragraph typically ends with a concluding sentence. A concluding sentence can be of a summarizing or transitional nature. It can even provide both a summarizing and transitional function. Ideally, the final sentence of a paragraph is continuative. That is, it presents a step forward referring to the main idea stated in the topic sentence and leads on to the next main argument that will be dealt with in the next paragraph. Let us finish our example paragraph with a concluding sentence. Our first example of a concluding sentence has a summarizing function. Thus, the EEG enables the realization of renewable energy projects that otherwise would not be feasible due to uncertain market conditions. Our second example of a concluding sentence has a summarizing and transitional function. Currently, the EEG enables the realization of renewable energy projects that otherwise would not be feasible due to uncertain market conditions. Let us have a closer look at the two alternative concluding sentences. As explained, our first example of a concluding sentence has a summarizing function. This is indicated by the adverb thus in the beginning of the sentence. The second example of a concluding sentence additionally has a transitional function. The adverb currently provides a transitional indication of the next argument laid out in the next paragraph. Referring to this, the next paragraph could start with the following topic sentence continuing the discussion. 
However, the current version of the EEG is under discussion whereby changes could alter the protective effect against market risk. Section 5. Cohesion This is how the final paragraph would look like. As mentioned in the section characteristics of a paragraph, connective and transitional wording should support the logical flow within the paragraph in order to provide cohesion. Here the connective words are highlighted. For example, hence, for this reason, and currently. Section 6. Indenting There are two options of paragraph layout. Option 1. If the paragraph is the first paragraph after a headline, then, in British English, the first line would not be indented. Option 2. If the paragraph is not the first paragraph after a headline, then, in British English, the first line would be indented. Please note that in American English, the start of a paragraph is always indented, whether under a headline or not. Section 7. 